Hello and welcome to those Endless Mysteries. Before we get started today, smash that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit that notification button as well, so you can keep up with all of our latest videos. And share this video and help our channel grow. So now let's get started. Now this sighting comes from McLean County, North Dakota, from August the 27th of 2005. The witness states that on August the 26th, around 2.30 a.m., her two cousins were driving back home, saying that they decided to take the back road home. They were about two to three miles away from their house on Country Road 7 when they said that they saw something strange up ahead, saying that it was in the northbound lane. As they got closer, they said, that they saw a creature that stood at least seven to eight feet tall, saying that they were going 50 to 55 miles per hour at the time of the sighting. But once they saw this creature, they slowed down, saying that this creature was large with brown hair covering its body. Once they had passed by this creature, they again hit the brakes with their tail light shining on this creature. The both of them looked over this creature once more. Then they said they gunned it all the way back home, saying that they were so scared of what they had just saw that they hit speeds up to 90 miles an hour getting back. Once they had gotten home, the witness says that they woke up her uncle and told him about what they had just seen, stating that they were sure they had just seen a Bigfoot creature. So at this point, they drove to the witness's house, waking her up and telling the witness the story of the sighting. At this point, the witness says that the girls looked scared and was shaking, saying this was when she knew that they had seen something. So she says that she took out her spotlights a 5 million and a 3.5 million illumination, with her uncle also bringing a 1 million. Wow, those are some strong lights for sure. Should be able to see whatever they need to. So after they had got the girls calmed down, she asked them to take her to where they spotted the creature. With both of them agreeing, they left their car and took the witness's aunt's van, saying that once they came to the spot of the siding, they started to scan the fields with their spotlights. As they drove around the area, saying that they went on to Country Road 6 and 5 while doing this, saying that her uncle was driving while she was on the passenger side scanning the fields. When she says that she picked up a bright red eye shine. At this point, she told her uncle to stop the van. She noticed that this creature looked to be on all fours. That at first it was heading straight at them. Then it just stopped in its tracks. Where it looked to have sat down. The witness says. That this thing sit there for a good three to five minutes while they watched this creature. The witness says that it looked like a gorilla from the movies, saying that it seemed unreal to her at first. Then as she realized that this was happening, she knows that they don't have gorillas in North Dakota, but here she was looking at something that shouldn't be here. At this point, the witness says that her uncle noticed another two sets of eyes behind the first creature, saying that her cousin started screaming and cursing at them to leave. They wanted us to call the cops or fish and game, so the witness says her uncle started to turn around while she kept watching this creature. At this time, the witness says, that this creature stood up. This is when she told her uncle to hurry up. We need to get fish and game out here. So he hit the gas heading home. 
Once they got back home, her cousin called the BIA and they told her that they would call the game warden. So the witness told her cousins that she and her uncle was going back out there to wait for the game warden, saying once they had gotten back to Country Road 5, that they got a bad smell that hit them. It was described as being a mix of pee and old sweat, but worse. At this point, they stopped the van and got out, saying that they started to listen for any noise. This is when the witness says that they saw lights coming from Road 6. It was the game warden saying that they flagged him down and told him their story of the sighting. So he said that he would check out the field. So he left with all of his spotlights on. So at this point, the witness and her uncle and a cousin's husband which wanted to come along with them, kept watching the field while talking about what they had seen this night. When the witness's uncle said, we should make a call to it or something. So her cousin's husband decided to make a howling sound. Then within just a few seconds, they got a faint bellow back with it sounding as if it was to the southwest of them, around a half a mile to a mile off in this distance. So the three of them jumped back into the van, driving to where they thought the sound emitted from. With the windows down, the three of them listened, trying to figure out where these creatures are now. But the witness says, that they heard nothing more, not even crickets or birds chirping, which was strange for this area. So they decided to turn around and go back. Then they kept looking until around 7 a.m. that morning. So the next day the witness said that they started looking for prints, with them finding some impressions in a cut wheat field saying that the prints were 15 and a half inches and about five and a half to six inches wide, saying that they stopped a BIA officer and told him of what they had found. So he came out and took pictures of the impressions. The prints were heading off into an eastern direction, so they started to track them. As they were following these prints, they came upon three other sets of prints, which seemed to be zigzagging around the straight prints they were, had been following, with some of these other prints being as small as four inches. So this makes me wonder if the prints that was zigzagging was the larger one's family following him through the field as he walked point and the rest of them followed maybe moving side to side of him. That's just how I'm taking this part of the report anyway. You might have a different opinion on it. Now, after about 30 minutes or so of tracking these prints, they came to an area where they looked to be piles of hay and pine branches stacked up, with the sap still running from where the branches were snapped off. After this, they lost the tracks, saying that they looked over the area and found a water sloop. It was about 200 yards away next to an end row of trees. Now the witness says that her and her uncle has come up with a theory that these creatures uses these sloughs and small ponds for drinking water as they head for Lake Sakawai. So on August the 31st, the witness and her uncle headed out to test their theory, saying that they were west of White Shield when they heard a low scream, which got a local farmer's dog barking, saying that they are sloops and small ponds in these areas where they have seen and heard the creatures. So the witness and her uncle truly believes in their theory. So they said they headed back out on September the 4th, 
figuring that this has given them a few days to get comfortable again. So they went to where they thought the creatures would be at, but they had no luck. No signs or calls from these creatures. They didn't even see any new prints. So this was the end of their hunt, the witness said, at least till September the 9th when six children saw a large, tall black thing running across the field, with this sighting being just a half a mile north from White Shield. The witness says that she went out and talked with the children. The children says when this creature was running that it was on two legs and that it was fast. Once it came to the road, it was across in three steps saying that this was around 9 p.m. with the sun starting to set. So the witness says that her and her uncle went to the spot where the children saw the creature, but that they didn't see any footprints or anything, but that they know what they saw that night is still out there, and they don't plan to stop looking for it. So this sighting happened back in 2005, and I hope they haven't given up yet. I think there is something out there for sure. So keep looking, guys. I wish you all the best of luck. With this sighting report, I find it very interesting how they found the prints, with the smaller tracks zigzagging over the larger tracks. Was the bigger track that of a male, or could it have been a female? with the younger ones in tow, following and playing with each other. Maybe that could be the reason they were zigzagging. Almost human-like if you think about it. Have you ever watched families walking on the beach or parks, with the mom and dad walking out front, while the kids runs around behind them playing and following them? Kind of sounds like that to me. But that's just my opinion. And I'm sure that you might have your own on this as well. I would love to hear them if you do. So drop a comment down below. And give us a big thumbs up if you like this video. And share and help our channel grow. Don't forget to sub and hit that notification button. So you can keep up with all of our videos. So till next time, have a great day.